How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Friday here on the show, and you know what that means? We have got SmackDown coming up tonight. We have AW Rampage live coming up tonight. And afterwards, they will be taping Battle of the Belts. So we'll tell you about that. We've got the Dynamite numbers from Wednesday night. Number one on cable, 938,000 viewers, 0.32 and 18 to 49. The return of Matt Cardona, NWA, 74th anniversary pay-per-view. And funny I should mention that because also appearing at the NWA 74th pay-per-view will be Kerry Morton, the son of Ricky Morton. He was on this show a couple of months ago, and he's back. We're going to talk about the NWA. And also, he was on the undercard of Ric Flair's last match. And we've got a lot of notes on Ric Flair's last match. A financially successful pay-per-view, the second biggest indie show in the U.S. in the modern era. So as I noted last week, don't expect this to be a one and done. There will be more. We've also got notes on banned terms in WWE that are no longer banned, including, believe it or not, wrestler and wrestling. Yes, occasionally people would say the word wrestler or wrestling, but you had to have it approved. You had to have it approved in order to say it on WWE television. Now, you're free to use that word whenever you want. Wrestling has been brought back to world wrestling entertainment. We'll tell you about a list of banned terms from last year. And uh, we can listen to them and find out which ones are no longer banned as we continue watching Raw and SmackDown. So a lot to get into here today. Dave Meltzer joins us in the second segment. We've got a lot of guests coming up. And if you'd like to text us, no know if we'll have time, but you can try. 425-780-7566. 425-780-7566. Back in a minute with more Observer Live. On the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Wrestling and wrestler are no longer considered dirty words in WWE. The two terms have been banned in the company in favor of sports entertainment and sports entertainer in recent years. Dave Meltzer addressed this and the more relaxed atmosphere under WWE's new regime in Friday's Observer and Newsletter. Quote, it was noted it was more relaxed and calmer, that the women felt there's going to be more focus on them, and that the words wrestler and wrestling were no longer dirty words talent was instructed to never use without authorization. And almost everyone considers that a good thing, he wrote. I'd like to know about the people that don't think that's a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing that they can say wrestler anymore. Last September, Dave wrote about words talent were prevented from using. Blood, choke, belt. Here's a list, by the way. So when you start hearing these again, that's also an improvement. Blood, choke, belt, strap, diva, headshot, trauma, kayfabe, mofos, house show, DQ. What do you mean you can't say DQ? You have to actually say disqualification? The anti-diva. Spinal injuries, victim, violence, violent, wrestling, wrestlers, WWF, wife beater, curb stomp. That one's always one of my favorites. You can't say curb stomp. You can do a curb stomp, but you can't actually call it that. And phrases including the word push, being over, babyface heel, job jobber, card, strangle, kill, and murder. Those were prohibited terms. Guess you can say kill again, because Edge did say he was going to kill what he created. And I'm sure we'll hear more as well. And, uh, you know, my big question is, how will this affect all of the fans that never learned how to talk? They only learned WWE speak. Because I've been to some house shows before, and I hear some of these fans talking to each other, and they talk to each other like they're WWE announcers. They use those terms like sports entertainment and... and, uh, you know, whatever they're supposed to say. Uh, opportunity. I hear that one a lot. I think Riddle will get an opportunity tonight. I'm like, dude, you guys are weird. Even uh, Justin Bieber, he did a tweet the other day thanking fans, because I guess he's been out or something like that. And he literally said, I want to thank each and every one of you. If I, if I took over, that would be a banned term. 
I'd have a new list of banned terms. And you know what they'd be? All the stupid terms they used to use. You're banned from saying sports entertainment. You're banned from saying sports entertainer. You're banned from saying opportunity. You're banned from the word deserve. There's got to be more. What about notwithstanding? <laughs> that one makes me laugh. But you're banned from each and every one of you. That's that's banned. You could say each of you. You could say every one of you. You could say all of you. You cannot say each and every one of you. Not not allowed anymore. What about the universe? And that's absolutely the WWE universe. That's absolutely banned. You can't even. They, I, I won't even allow an astronomer gimmick because I don't want anyone talking about the universe anymore. Well, done with it. Wh- what about if Kiana James had that astronomer gimmick? I'd make an exception. All right. Who is saying mofos? Because I'm fine with outlawing that one because that reminds me of Mojo Raleigh. So anybody with mofos, you can keep that one on the banned list. Hmm. Also, according to numbers reported in this week's Observer Newsletter, last Sunday's Ric Flair's last match pay-per-view was a financially successful one, second biggest ever indie show in the U.S. in the modern era. Pay-per-view did between twenty and 25,000 buys streaming and nearly 4,200 through linear pay-per-view. The number is impressive considering the show had no national TV. It had plenty of promotion, just not national TV promotion. The only promotions with a show not promoted on national TV that ever beat this number would have been all in at 55,000. And when Pancras was billing itself as pro wrestling, and SEG did a tape show that did 60,000. 6,800 fans showed up, $500,000 gate, second biggest behind uh, the All In show. Which actually the exact numbers were all in did four hundred fifty eight thousand five twenty five and Ric Flair four forty eight five oh two. So aside from all in, WCW, WWE and AEW, that gate number was never hit previously in pro wrestling history in the US. As far as an indie show doing sixty eight hundred fans pay in the US, aside from all out, there was a show at the LA Sports Arena that drew seven thousand in twenty thirteen. Elijo del Santo and LA Park and Rio de Jalisco Jr. My God. <laughs> versus Cien Carr's Blue Demon Jr. and Dr. Wagner Jr., but the gate would have been nowhere close. Jacques Rougeau Jr. did have bigger crowds when he promoted his own retirement show, as well as his own promotion at the Bell Center in Montreal many years back. This would have been the, the mid-'90s, I think. Was beat it? Hulk Hogan. Maybe a little bit later. Yeah, he did beat Hulk Hogan. What a what a gimmick that Rougeau was. He, amazing. That family, Johnny Rougeau, should be in the... Uh... Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame. He really should be in a, a really an amazing family. I'm pretty sure the Mounties in the Hall of Awesome. He should be. If not, should he be. will be very soon. Yeah. How about the shock stick though? You, is that he's that going in with him? Yeah, whatever. It's part of the gimmick. All right. SmackDown tonight. We have got a number one contenders gauntlet match: Raquel, Aaliyah, Shotzi, Zia Lee, Shayna Baszler, Natty, and Sonya. So we're gonna get some women on TV. We got Roman Reigns addressing Drew McIntyre. What is he, an envelope? And we've got Shinsuke Nakamura versus Ludwig Kaiser. And if Nakamura wins, keep in mind they've had like three matches and they've, they've tied. If, uh, if Nakamura wins, he will become the number one contender to Gunter's Intercontinental title. Either way, Kaiser's taking an ass kicking. And then tonight, we have got... John Moxley versus old Mancer, Mance Warner, in an Love AEW it. world title eliminator match. So if he wins, he gets a title shot. Where is this thing? But I would not expect that. We've got Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland versus Tony Nese and Josh Woods and Madison Rain will debut against Layla Gray. Bro, what am I going to do with you except cringe? Why don't you hold that up for the whole show one of these days? That's right, buddy. Go beat him. Go beat that old Moxley tonight. Woo! Natural light. I can't believe that Manster's got his own chair, to be honest with you. And it's metal. Is that airbrushed on there? What? Is that airbrushed on there? No, with this? Yeah. It's fathead, buddy. Didn't you see these in the crowd oh, during I Ric see. Flair's last match? No, I didn't. They actually had some with hair on it, believe it or not. They must have those left over somewhere. I don't know who found that, but, you know. Mancer. Yeah, I don't know a lot of things going on about right now. 
Manser and Mox. Dynamite, 938,000 viewers, down 3.9% from last week. Second lowest audience for the show since June 22nd. 18 to 49.32. Show's lowest rating since June 22. It was, however, number one on cable. Uh, ratings were even or down in most demos. Had a huge increase in males, 12 to 34. Wasn't that the... Uh, oh, no, it was females, 12 to 34, that gave up on NXT with that women's championship match. The point two eight that uh, Dynamite drew in males, 12 to 34, was 40% higher than last week. You know, sometimes we go through all of these uh, these demos and these 12 to 34 and women, and, the, and it's like, they're just... They're so random. And then, you know, how much analysis can you really do? Because they're totally random. What was it this week... That males 12 to 34 decided this show was so awesome as compared to last week. Huh? What? I mean, well, maybe I they're super into Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa and, and uh, maybe it was that match being in the first hour. But I mean, it's like sometimes I look at these demos and it's just that's what happened this week. Because that's they shouldn't be talked about week after week. This all started from the 90s and the whole back and forth between WWF and WCW on Monday nights. The fact that this has continued on, everybody's at blame for this that talks about it week after week. There's really no reason to do any knee-jerk response to it because you have to see what the numbers show over a series of weeks to see why somebody moved. If there's not a big event that's very obvious that moved numbers... There's really no point in, in getting deep into it. There's really not. Okay, and but I, I, it becomes a talking point though because it's been institutionalized as a talking point since the nineties. Okay, well I got a better talking point here before we go to break. Glenn, Glenn Jacobs will remain mayor of Knox County, Tennessee. He defeated Republican Jacobs or uh, some other guy. But anyway, it said he held a forty-four hundred vote edge over Helsley which he reported was a 48,000-vote edge. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer joining us here. The new issue of The Observer is up on the front page, WrestlingObserver.com. Sign up today at WrestlingObserver.com. You can read this issue and uh, thousands of, and, of and other last issues. Week, last week's issue on Vince McMahon. Yeah, last week's Incredible. you can read the history of Vince McMahon. 15,000 words that he wrote in a few days on the history of Vince McMahon. Yeah, and this was, a, this was the history of Ric Flair. Not quite the history, but a lot of behind-the-scenes stories on Ric Flair, yeah. That's right. And virtually every observer dating back to 1991 is available on the site. That's a lot of words. Do I need to do the math here? Like when you got inducted into the Cauliflower Alley Hall of Fame? It's probably more words than... than any sports writers ever written oh, it is in for sure. their lives? Yeah, in the there, there's, of their lives. there's no uh, there's no question. And more yeah. history written by one person maybe than yeah anybody else, anyone especially for any, somebody who's still active. Anyone in any sport for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would estimate that there's uh, fifty six million four hundred and twenty thousand <laughs> words on the history of wrestling if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's a that's a I, I use and 30, that's only 000. on and, and that's only on and that's only on uh, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. The actual number's higher. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in the new Obser uh, Observer this week, you uh, had a lot about SummerSlam changes. We heard about the uh, word wrestling and wrestler no longer being banned. And uh, I was amused that you wrote uh, virtually everybody was, was uh, excited about these changes. That means some people aren't. Are we talking like Kevin Dunn and uh, who else Oh, no, no. There's, 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 there's wrestlers who are um, paranoid about their spot. Well, um, sure, but I'm talking about I mean, who, who would not the, like to be able to use the word wrestler. Yeah, I don't know that there's anyone. Um, I have not spoken to anyone or heard from anyone who was unhappy that the word wrestler and wrestling are back in the vocabulary. So, yeah, I, I can't imagine. I mean, those weird Vinceisms, you know, being gone. I mean, there's I don't know that there's really an argument that that's not a, a good thing. So we've got uh, we got some changes. We've got more coming here tonight. And uh I guess what have you heard from from the wrestlers? I mean, you you wrote a little bit about the words and how it was a little more relaxed, and the women feel they're going to get a better opportunity. What else? Yeah, I read the, again, the whole show is going to be the women tonight. So there you go. I guess they are. I mean, that gauntlet's probably going to go an hour or close to it. You know, so um, which is something that they've never tried before. I don't think at at at, at that level. We also got the uh, notes on Ric Flair's final match being uh, very, very successful, which suggests we're going to see more final matches from other people. 
Um, but who? I mean, like I, it's funny because I was actually in contact with Conrad today and, um, you know, I was, you know, just talking about the success, but it's kind of like, okay, what, you know, like that's a big, you know, Ric Flair's retirement is a very unique thing. And the end of Jim Crockett promotions in a, in a weird way is a very unique thing, but you know, what do you do that can be comparable? I mean, there isn't, it's not like this is some great idea that you can now start, a, you know, a, a yearly show or even around. Um, maybe, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they do a yearly show, but I don't, I don't see anything that would be able to generate this level of interest, even if you do a multi-promotional show, because this show was not sold on the idea that, um, you know, you could see guys from all these promotions and you could see this great triple A match, even though you got that. This show was completely sold on the idea you were seeing Ric Flair's last match and they did the good video series to build it up, even if the match wasn't um, something that, you know, you might like. I know it was not something that I was happy seeing, but that's but it was it was a financial success at a pretty big level, actually. Well, well, I would not. Uh, well, hold on one one quick thing. Yeah. I would not advocate for this. Keep keep that in mind. I'm not advocating. for Oh, this. what Ric Flair wrestling again next year? No, 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 no. <laughs> but if you if you watch the show, there were some people there, and you know, it, I don't think it would be as big as Ric Flair's last match, but a Bret Hart's last match or a oh, Mick Foley's last match. But is there? I a, hope they don't do it either. Well, I hope Ric Flair didn't do it. He did. But is there any promotional legs to a retirement tour, and do you want to be known as that? He's had success being a convention promoter, you know, the first time around with podcasts, now with this. I mean, isn't his, to me, his best thing that he could do is just throw his anchor around the bigger weekends because he seems to have great relationships with both WWE and AEW, where if he just has a show where he raps GCW and BLP and maybe some other groups, that to me would be his best bet because if you go the retirement route is that what you will really want to be known as that doesn't have legs to me well if you're What's making a TV? lot of money but, but i mean you could, you, without rick flair but but, but even 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 bret hart okay who would be the biggest name that you could probably do this with i don't think that bret hart would draw in that type of a situation anywhere close to rick flair there's a completely different type of appeal and also i don't think bret hart would want to do it um at this stage i don't think like like I think Brett being there for Rick's last match probably more probably in more in his mind probably would tell him please don't do it you know what I mean because he's I don't think he wants to go out like that. How about we just do a series of last whatevers like uh, Vince McMahon's last show? You can go and just like book an event, have a bunch of screw jobs, and call everyone oh. sports entertainers or. And then he then Conrad's got the uh, reputation for being the Grim Reaper. Then the, anything that he runs the last one, then then it's killed and in the ground. I don't know if you want that reputation to have, but I don't know. But it did well. It did. It did as 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 a promotion. I mean, as far as an independent show, it was the second most successful in the history of wrestling. You know, the biggest being All In. So yeah, you know, I mean, history of wrestling goes back a long, long time. Indeed it does. Yes, Dave, I, I got to ask you this because you wrote about it in the newsletter and there's been a lot of dark clouds that have passed over because of this whole Warner Brothers Discovery deal and, and their earnings report and all the ch changes that they've been making. But you write in the newsletter, Discovery programming is usually budgeted between 400 and 500 K per hour. Wrestling fits into that parameter because right now it's about roughly 321,000 per hour. Is there maybe a silver lining in this with all the changes they'd like to make to possibly TBS and TNT where they have lower programming cross across the board, yet AEW could still get a tiny increase because it is fitting into oh, well, what I they mean, want? I, I, I would think that they should get an increase. I mean, I'm not saying no increase at all, but I mean, the, the idea that people had talked about, you know, I mean, like, like again, like Raw is $1,921,000 an hour and they're 323 and there are ratings now or you know three quarters of raw in the demo you know i mean um and and, it, and they were neck and neck um you know at this time last year so um you know the gap has definitely widened but it's like they're not going to get like if they get 50 percent of raw they're not i don't think they'll get that because that would be um oh god you know that that would be over you know well over 100 million a year 
um, and it's viable. Before the merger, I would think it was actually a pretty good shot they would get over $100 million a year. Now I'm not so sure. Um, there's so many different things in play. I mean, it's like, you know, because there's there's also the talk, you know, they could add more shows. Um, and, you know, obviously we know there's a reality show coming. Um, there's always ideas of other programming. Um, so there's ways to work. There's so many different ways to work deals. And also, you know, I mean, the one thing that, that when I was studying this thing is that is the thing that hit me was how valuable they would be to ESPN in the same manner that UFC is. And with this, with the success that ESPN has had with UFC on pay-per-view, um, there's nobody else, literally, there's nobody else out there because WWE is ran from pay-per-view that they could have, you know, they would not have anywhere close to UFC success, but they would have multi-millions, tens of millions every year um, if they made a deal with... Um, with AEW to purchase their pay-per-view rights like they did with the UFC. But for AEW, then that would put them entirely in the ESPN umbrella. And wouldn't you have the bad risk of being lost in that mix where there's so much on ESPN, whereas Discovery, from how it looks, if they're turning if they're turning TNT into USA, they're going to need an anchor. And considering that Ray, uh, Dynamite's num the number one show, one of the number one shows on cable, like they're going to need an anchor for all these other cheaper reality shows in some ways, even if they don't get what they want monetarily. Is that stability better than going to an ESPN where you might just get lost in the mix with every other property they have? That's a really good point. And I used to argue that um, years ago when when. Um... UFC was on spike and everybody was like, oh, you know, it should be on ESPN. And we and, and Joe Silva and I both said on spike, you know, we we can do, you know, we're the kings on ESPN. We're just another property. But now the way things have matured, I think UFC is is way better off on ESPN than it would be on spike, even though they are just another property, just because of the nature of how much money ESPN can afford to pay them. So, um yeah, there's there's definitely two ways of looking at it, but I think but they're, um, well, they're not going to be the kings on TNT because you've got the NBA. Uh, but they but they are aside from the NBA there. Well, well, they're not on, t they're, on TNT. That's the for the Friday night show anyway, which or is TBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and yeah. the yeah. thing is, Discovery can pimp. Discovery but, can pimp the AAW where they can't really do anything other than the NBA than to have that property on that night. That's the one thing, at least with AEW, you're able to have it on Discovery Plus or whatever you, in theory, would want to do with it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, like I said, there's ways to work out deals, and there's also there should be other suitors, you know, like whether it be Showtime, whether it be... Um, you know, whether it would be ESPN, whether it would be somebody else. I mean... Um, that and that would be the key to the rights increase. If other people want you and bid up, then Discovery would need to pay to keep you. If nobody else bids for it, um, you know that would be, then they would get a better deal. So I mean, that's really, really the key is multiple suitors more than anything else. As far as you know, what happens to AEW with the next television rights deal? All right, we're going to uh, wrap it up. Thanks for the uh, segment here, Dave. As noted, the new observers up on the front page. If you want to read more about this. WrestlingObserver.com is the place to go. You can read the uh, the new observers, the back issues of the observers, and, of course, all of the podcasts as well. 13,000 archive podcasts, WrestlingObserver.com. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Happy today to be joined by Kerry Morton. Who is, hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on the uh, thanks for having me on the air today. I'm I'm really thrilled to be on here. Yeah, you're on the phone. You're driving to a show. That's right. I'm heading to the Gathering Three here in Charlotte, North Carolina, where the main event is going to take place of my father and myself versus the legendary George South and Colby Carino. Oh my oh. God, what a life! <laughs> so holy <awesome>. smokes. <laughs> yep, the road alone, you though, Carrie. Just be ready for it. The road alone, you. I was once told. Well, I, I appreciate that. Right now, the road is kicking my tail, so I am trying to get one step ahead. But every time I get a foot ahead, I, I take three steps back. So the road life is something that is hard to get used to. Hey, have well, you been to the gathering before? I went to the gathering when I was a little boy. Actually, believe this or not, uh, me and Bobby Fulton's son were got in the wrestling ring at the gathering a couple of years ago uh, after the end of the show, and we ended up drawing the whole crowd and put on like a 10 minute match after everything was done for us. We're just little boys running around in a wrestling gear. 
And uh, sure enough, I still get people that come to my merchandise table today and tell me about uh, the story of me and Bobby Fulton's son wrestling at the gathering. Did wow. anybody throw money at you or give you money afterwards? Unfortunately, I don't recall getting any money. So that's the they, big bummer. But I, they, I won't they double them. Throw the money at me. Charge them twice. If they give you that story and they tell you that this weekend, make sure you hit them with at least 40 bucks for a picture, let alone an autograph. <laughs> I will note that down. I will note that down for you guys. Well, you know, you talked about the road owning you, and uh, and one what what was it? Two steps forward and one step back. Is that what you said? Uh, it feels like for me, it's one step forward, three steps. Back. Oh, That's one. Well, right yeah, there were three steps back the other day. I saw uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and Brock Anderson beat uh, you and your father. Ric Flair's last match was sad to see old Ricky go down, but he, he gave it his all, didn't he? He did, and you know, at the end of the day, that's all we can do is give it our all. But uh, what a what a night that was! What an experience! You know, being in the ring with my father in front of eight thousand people screaming rock and roll was something that I hope to never forget. Uh, it's truly uh, a moment that I will cherish forever, and especially getting to hang out with the legends uh, uh, that weekend with Bertha Hitman Hart, the Nature Boy. Uh, get to reminisce some of the Dusty Rhodes stories, hearing from. Uh, you know, his lovely wife and their foundation. So it was truly just a great, great weekend. So how many uh, how many opportunities have you had to, tra- uh, to uh, team with your father? So, uh, you know, that, that's a good question that you asked. That. My, my dad and I have been tag teaming for about a year and a half now, maybe about two years so far, and we uh, are having such a ball, you know, especially for him right now. He's on the Rock and Roll Express farewell tour of him and Roberts, and I get to tag along with them, and we're traveling all over the country, wrestling, uh, meeting new people, uh, kind of re-exploring some of the old kinships of the fans. So it's truly a, a really, really fun time, and, and uh, I'm, I'm learning so much. Every step that I go and every road trip that we make, I'm picking up something to put in my, uh, my uh, wrestling book, I, I would say. How long is this, uh, this retirement tour going to last? That's a good question. It's like the Kiss tour. It might go on. Yeah, forever, I'm not. I'm not confident no. this is going to wrap up anytime soon. No, believe it or not, since we're on such a big radio station, I think I can announce this here soon. Is uh, they've been talking about recently the the last legitimate match of the Rock and Roll Express, and let me tell you this: the names that have been mentioned so far are pretty astonishing. I can't say much right now because I don't want to give anything away. I want to make sure we have everything set in stone. But it's going to be a match that will hopefully last forever and ever and i know ricky and robert when they step in that ring are going to give it their all oh my so god it, the it, rock and roll express's last match is that what you're trying to tell me here i'm trying to tell you here it is something that has been talked about for a while now and uh we're starting to get everything kind of figured out and see where we can go from there you know i bring it up because uh you know rick flair is a legend and all but man he wasn't moving too well on that show and uh you know, your father is, uh, I think, they're only eight years apart. And, uh, you know, after watching Rick's match, I watched Ricky Morton, and I'm like, my God, this guy could go for like 30 more years if he wanted to. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That's why I think uh, he enjoys tag teaming with me is I keep him young. And uh, we keep going, and we, we keep on learning new things and being innovative as a father and son tag team. And that's what uh, what's that's what's so fun about this, especially with the match we just had with Brian and Brock. I mean, we brought back the '80s. Uh, we brought back an '80s style wrestling match. Uh, although our time was limited, we could have went on for another 45 minutes and uh, still give the fans what they what they paid for. And that was professional wrestling at its finest. You know, also on that that show, there was an angle, and uh, Matt Cardona came down to the ring. And uh, he took off his arm brace. And I was like, what are you doing, buddy? You out of your mind? And then, like, they did some spots, and he's selling his arm and everything like that. And then and then he announces today that he is going to be wrestling on the NWA 74 show, which is on August 27th, okay? He tore his bicep in May. How is this happening? You know that that's that's interesting that you asked that. I get to I get to talk with Matt in the locker room, and don't get me wrong, Matt's a personality of his own. I could go on and on about him, but something that I can't I can't say about him truthfully is he's a hard work and dedicated to his craft and his business. And you know, uh, when he told me in the locker room, he said, "Gary, I'm going to step back in that ring, come NWA 74," and I I kind of chuckled in his face. I kind of laughed, but now to think that it's actually happening, you know, I, I can't really doubt him. You know, the man. 
works hard uh, to where he is right now. And if I weren't booked that night, I'd probably step in the ring with him if I could. Now, it is a it is a two-night event. It's August 27th and 28th. And at this point, we've got uh, six matches scheduled for the first night, including it's Matt Cardona versus TBA. So, uh, you know, maybe you could get through Homicide and then uh, step in there for that one. But uh, That would be something uh, I wouldn't be opposed to, I'll tell you that much. Well, let's start with that. You're going to be wrestling Homicide for the NWA World Junior Heavyweight title. Homicide. That's right. You know, and, and it kind of gets you, kind of gets the, the gears moving when you start to think about this. As a 21-year-old from East Tennessee, if you would have told me a couple of years ago that I'd be wrestling Homicide for the NBA World Junior Heavyweight Championship, I'd probably laugh at your face. Uh, I wouldn't think it was believable. But now, you know, now I feel as if I'm, I'm the underdog coming into this match against a legendary wrestler of the independents such as Homicide. And I know what he's capable of. I've been doing my studying. I've been uh, picking his matches. I even talked to an old rival of his, Steve Carino, just asking for some advice. And uh, he told me, he said, you know, expect the unexpected, and that's what I'm going into. Uh, I'm, I'm going in open-minded and, and ready and training my tail off just to uh, be the best I possibly can be that night. Hey, uh, what year were you born, Kerry? <laughs> I was born in 2001. 2001, my God. Do you know that the year that you were born... The year you were born, Carrie, I was down at King of the Indies, and uh, I wrestled that night, by the way. I wrestled the year you were born, you young That's whippersnapper. Fantastic. Right. I, I go back. I don't know if you still. I, I go back and watch those tapes of you, so I understand. Like, yes. I, you were the King of the Indies. Uh, I, well, I wasn't the King of the Indies, but I was there. But anyway, the point is, you know who else was there? It was Low Key. And uh, Loki was, was uh, you know, back then, he was great. And and I said to Loki, I was like, man, who trained you? And his he says, homicide. I'll try and do it. Homicide. Homicide. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't know anything about a homicide. And I see this guy, Loki, that's just out of this world. And I'm expecting him to say, like, some big, you know, famous name or whatever. And he goes, Homicide. And I'm like, who in the... So then, anyway, later, you know, I start watching Homicide because he gets into Impact and everything like that, Ring of Honor and everything. And uh, this dude's awesome. This guy can work. So, uh, you know, he's he'll he'll try and cut you and everything like that. But uh, you better have your working boots on, dude, because this guy can go. Well, yeah, as Matt Cardano once said, I think I'm always ready. And I, I'm ready for this. I have my working boots on tight and ready to go. And uh, I'll have them laced up because I'm ready to go with just as much as Homicide does. I know this is... Uh, not only one of the most biggest nights for me, but it's a big night for Homicide to defend that championship on a grand stage. So uh, it's something that it, it really kind of gets me moving. I have something to look forward to in the professional wrestling world. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to what's to come. Uh, and, and, you know, as people always say, and I'll go back to it one more time on this, is I'm going to expect the unexpected. Carrie, were you this busy last year because you're going to be rolling into a school season soon? And I know we talked about it a little the last time you were on about your, your cheerleading exploits. I mean, you're going to be moving into a school season as well, too. I mean, how much because, I mean, your father is in demand every weekend. You know, I would be you know assuming it somewhere and you've been going along with him. I mean, how are you balancing life and how are you looking to balance it as we go into fall? You know, I think balance is key as we go into this. Uh, I, I've been really kind of preparing, talking to my professors a little ahead of the game, just kind of get myself ready to uh, uh, for this upcoming school year. You know, school starts a week before I leave to go to St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and during that time, I, you know, I'm trying to get all my homework done. I try to get my classes fulfilled, uh, making sure I don't miss a ton, because after that I have three days of tapings at the uh, Skyway Studio in Nashville, Tennessee, that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So... You know, I'm trying to just be a step ahead of the game, you know, with balance, working out, going to cheerleading practice, uh, owning my little marketing business that I have on the side, and then becoming a professional wrestler. So I got a lot of my plate, but balance is key, and that's something I'm going to try to stick to.
Well, how important is school to you? Because there's a lot of young people out there, younger than ever. You Very talk important, about Nick, Mike. What kind the of Nick a question Wayne's, is that? Yeah, but we talk about the Nick Wayne's the Billy Starks. We talk about Nick getting signed to AEW, but people forget about the fact that Tony Khan wants him to get a college education, wants him to get an education. And obviously, Carrie, you're doing that. A lot of people forget about that, and they forget about having a fallback plan because they can be seen earlier than ever. How important is school to you? And how is it important? Cool. Do you believe it's important to everybody? That's, that's a great question. You know, school is very important to me, especially to my family as well. You know, when I told my dad I want to become a professional wrestler, he told me, you have to go to college and get your education, at least a bachelor's. Uh, and I, I made a deal with him. We shook hands, and I, I saw my mother, and she was on the same page. And, and that's something that, you know, I, I'm dedicated to do, and especially in my marketing major in school. And I, I love the marketing scene. I love doing social media content management for companies that I, I got the opportunity to work for. So now, you know, I'm trying to use my degree to my fullest. One day I hope to be in charge of the uh, NWA social media squad or the AEW or the WWE social media squad on side of wrestling. So I got some goals uh, that's a little outside of wrestling that's still involved in wrestling. And But at the end of the day, school is very, very important to me. Uh, get my education and just saying that I have that to my name. Well, the show is August 27th and 28th. It's Wrestling at the Chase, everybody. St. Louis, Missouri, the Coruscant Ballroom. And uh, two nights. And nothing announced for you on night two, Carrie. But can you can you tell us if you're expected to make an appearance on night two as well? Well, I'll say this much. Uh, if I get the, the chance to win the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Champion, I will be a defending champion. And I mean all over, not necessarily just in the National Wrestling Alliance. I will continuously travel the globe uh, if the opportunity comes. So, you know, I don't know what's in store for me for night two, but as I would think, I, I'm going to be in attendance. And uh, I want to wrestle. Uh, most importantly, at the end of the day, I want to wrestle. I want to improve. Uh, I love this business and I cherish this business. And uh, most importantly, I, uh, I I want to make an impact in the National Wrestling Alliance, in which I'm doing time and time again. So uh, you'll expect me. You you should expect uh, for me to be there that night. That's all I can say. That. And uh, by the way, who are you uh, wrestling at the gathering? Did you mention this? Yes, uh, I'll mention it more time as well. I, so the the main event of the gathering, from what I was just told and advertised, is myself and then my father Ricky Morton. Uh, we're going against the legendary Mr. Number One George Sell. And oh, that's Steve right. Carino's son, Colby that's Carino. That's right. George so, South and Colby. Well, so hey, listen. Yeah, we have to head to a break, but I want to, I want to thank you so much. Drive safe. We'll uh, we'll keep in touch. Good luck tonight, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sabravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com, is noted SmackDown is tonight. And, man, I read that SmackDown preview. Didn't even realize it was a gauntlet match. It is. It's a gauntlet match. Mm -hmm. Raquel, Aaliyah, Shotzi, Xia Li, Shayna, Natty, and Sonya. You know what I like about that? You could always add somebody to a gauntlet that's not working there or not in the situation now. I don't know if that'll happen. I don't, hey, just a pipe dream. What are you trying but, to say? Who's coming up? I would love to see, I don't know, but I would love to see someone come up and make an impact, you know, and they, and I'd like to see people like Zia Lee, once all this thing is over and shakes out, people who have not gotten an opportunity actually get a little bit more of an opportunity to show their wares and see whether they're better off to be there, better off in NXT, or better off to move on to somewhere else. Well, I guess I guess we'll see. You know what? I I'd, I'd, I'd bet you there ain't going to be a surprise. It's just going to be those. Could be. Those women there. Some How long do we need the match to be anyway? For crying out loud, that's going to be a know. long match, dude. Going to be watching Braves, Mets, and then uh, Padres, Dodgers tonight, so everything else is on the DVR. God agrees, apparently, because it's rumbling right now. You hear that? Actually, I did hear that. Golly. Mother Nature, baby. Don't mess with Mother Nature, ever. Well, there's a uh, very, very beautiful blue sky outside my house right now. It's 75 degrees, lovely. 75? I... What's that like? Do you know what? It's banned in WWE, but it's not banned on this show. I deserve this weather. I deserve it after this winter that we had. So I'm going to go enjoy it. And uh, sucks to be you. But you know what, everybody? We're going to wrap it up for today. I do want to thank Mike, as always. This callers mofo. and listeners. Dave Meltzer. Carrie Morton. Read the last two editions of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. No joke. On Flair and especially McMahon. Well, do of that. course you should. We're going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.